Hello, Internet, and welcome to another episode of Experimental Cataclysm, the show where we talk about recent changes to the experimental version of Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. And this show is going to be a little bit different this week. Normally, I head over to the commits page of the GitHub and sift through just dozens or hundreds of changes and pick out a few big ones or whatever I find interesting. Now, for this episode, there just weren't that many things to talk about. Like, so few that I actually thought maybe the commits page had changed in some way that it was missing a few updates or something like that. So there's really only one thing that stood out to me, although I did grab a couple of smaller things as well. Now this will be a short show, and at the top of the show here we're going to talk mostly about some recent bugs that have been affecting Experimental and give an update on what's going on there. So yeah, it's definitely a smaller show than usual. So first of all, let's talk about toddlers. Now there was a bug in Experimental where randomly created characters were starting out as two-year-olds, I believe was the screenshot that I saw about it. And while it's a amusing to think of a wee baby trying to tackle the zombie apocalypse, this was obviously not intended behavior. Now, this has been resolved by Cass Wedson and is no longer an issue. However, it is one of those fun little fixes that you see in uh, indie game change logs from time to time and you have to stop for a second and reread it to make sure you understood it, and quirks like this are what makes the development of this game so interesting. Next up we have another bug, this one is uh, unfortunately an ongoing problem, so you may have noticed that when you go to certain towns there are are a shocking number of zombies. And I don't mean like, oh, there's a dozen zombies in the street, that's so many zombies. No, sometimes you walk into a town and there's 300 plus enemies all in one small area. One of the screenshots in the issue shows 480 enemies and those are just the ones that are visible in the player's current sight radius. Now, unfortunately, there is not an explanation of why this is happening. Most of the comments on the issue are just people confirming this bug, including vanilla games and modded games as well, so most likely Likely, this is a problem with the core game and not connected to a specific mod. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any meaningful feedback for you or a way to resolve this problem if you encounter it in the game. We basically have to just sit back and wait and hope that the contributors or the devs will puzzle out what is going on here and get it fixed. It's not actually an issue in every town, and people have suggested that if you teleport to a different overmap, it caused cities to generate normally again. However, for a casual player, that's kind of a... Yeah, that's a game-breaking issue. You don't want to abandon your base or your vehicle or whatever, and really it's a huge hassle to travel manually across an entire overmap, and teleporting obviously does not allow you to bring much gear and stuff like that with you. So unfortunately, if you're walking into town and you see 100 plus enemies, you should just immediately leave, not even try to tackle that area, because most likely there are several hundred more just waiting for you. It does suck, but unfortunately there's really nothing you can do unless you want to debug kill them all, which, you know, also is not an ideal solution. And then moving on to our final bug for this video, we've got a, a pretty buggy issue with player vision. There were some updates recently about how tiles are displayed when they're below the player, as well as some fixes for peeking and similar vision changing things. Now unfortunately, in the current version, if you peek or even just walk around, your character will sometimes have vision in random directions around them. And while this does not break your game or anything like that, it is very obnoxious to have your vision randomly popping up in areas that you you shouldn't be able to see. It also raises the question on whether or not enemies have this same random vision, which could lead to you being revealed even when you're in buildings or hiding behind cover. Now I didn't see anyone mentioning this applying to enemy vision, it is possible that this is completely a player centric issue, but I also don't really know and that was the first thing I thought about when I saw this, so I figured I would mention it. Now there is currently a draft version of a PR that is hopefully going to fix this issue, but as of the time of this recording, it has not been resolved. Now the last two bugs that I've mentioned are things that I do consider to be pretty massive issues in your current gaming experience, and since neither of them have been resolved as of the time of this recording, I would recommend you not update for a little while if you can avoid it. Now I'm not sure when these issues started, uh, sorry about that, so for many of us, unfortunately, it's probably too late because we've already updated the game. But yeah, I don't know, hopefully we'll see some resolutions in the near future, and hopefully that draft PR works out and solves the vision problem. Moving on, 
on next up today from dcheh222 i don't know how to say your name i'm sorry i see you on discord and stuff so like no disrespect but anyway we've got corded power drills and a tweak to the way that cordless drills will spawn in the game so first of all this created a new tool which is simply called the power drill this is a drill that is designed to be plugged in for power rather than using batteries it of course comes with the ability to plug it into your power grid and provides a high drilling quality now this of course is very self-explanatory it's a corded drill instead of a cordless drill now the other thing that this PR did was review where both the corded and cordless version of the drill should spawn now, apparently despite being in the game for a while the cordless drill was not part of several power tool spawn locations and so this has been fixed you should begin finding both the cordless and corded variety of drill in many locations where you would expect to find them and I don't have a lot to say here <laughs> like I said the show is really light this week so this you know most of this stuff is pretty small stuff next up today from Dave to 2700 we've got a change to the alloy reference book that we discussed last week or two weeks ago I always say that don't I last week even of the show is bi-weekly this was the book created specifically to house the chunk of bronze recipe and at the time it contained nothing else well based on me mentioning that i did not like a book existing for just one recipe this pr sought to add the various steel qualities to the book it also adjusted where the book can be found, so you are more likely to find this moving forward. Now, while I mentioned that I didn't like the book having only one recipe, it wasn't intended to be a severe criticism or anything, so I was a little surprised to see my comment off, you know, it was an offhanded comment, but it was referenced in the PR. But ultimately, I am indeed happier seeing that this book has more recipes rather than being a bespoke book for one singular recipe. Next up today from SmileyNet, we've got an option to modify the unload zone in the Zone Manager tool. Tool. So I initially thought this was a little bit more complicated than it actually is. It appears to be very straightforward, although in my testing I could not get it to work. So when you create an unload everything zone using the in-game zone manager tool, you get a variety of pop-ups allowing you to fine tune how it works. So for example, you could specify that the zone detach all weapon mods if it's able to do that. Now this PR added a new pop-up to the series of pop-ups, which asks you you know, honestly, I'm, I'm having a hard time phrasing how this works, so I'm just going to read what it says here. It says, avoid unloading item stacks, not charges, greater than a certain amount. And then the next pop-up allows you to specify what the cap is on how big the stack can be. So essentially, let's say you wanted a zone to unload everything. Well, this means it would unload things like cotton patches if they were in a container. And this is obnoxious because you mostly don't want to unload those things and because it takes a long time to do it. So this pop-up allows you to set a threshold for unloading and the default is 20. Now this means it would not unload anything where the contained stack is above 20. So if you had 50 cotton patches in a backpack that would not be unloaded. Now all of that said, I could not get this to work in my testing. I tried it with lots of things, tea leaves, salt, uh, cotton patches. These are specifically referenced in the PR as things that work. Unfortunately, no matter what container they were in or what number of them there were and what I specified, my zone manager tool did not do anything. Now I have been encountering issues with the zone manager tool recently. I also had issues testing the corpse zone several weeks ago. And when I went to discuss this on Discord, I never really found out what the issue was so I'm gonna assume I'm doing something wrong and just don't realize it so unfortunately I was not able to test this it just flat out did not work for me at all it does not work with either the sort or unload options in that menu so yeah it's not exactly a great segment I know but hopefully it works for other people and this is just a me issue and uh, maybe I just am incompetent I really don't know why this is not working everyone I spoke to it worked for them so I don't know what the issue is here I it must be me so sorry about that I just don't really know what to say about it and then finally today and yeah I know it's a short show like I said Finally today from Evan Bolster, we've got some great improvements to the UI related to climbing down a Z level. So previously, let's say you were standing on a roof and you wanted to climb down. Well, no matter which tile you examined, you would get essentially the same message, which provided no feedback on the likelihood of slipping, falling, taking damage, any of that stuff. Now, this meant that it was very difficult to know where it was safe to descend, and indeed, almost every location was not safe at all. Well, the main thing in this PR from the player side is that the messaging will now be a lot more specific. Attempting to climb down will provide you a variety of information, which is color-coded, explaining if it seems safe or not, how badly you would be injured if you did fall, and whether or not you can easily climb back up. 
There are charts in the PR that explain how the game determines which message to display. So for example, if you have a less than 2% chance of falling, it will say, quote, it seems safe to climb down like this. If the estimated fall damage is less than 5, it will say falling wouldn't hurt much. Now there is a part of me that wishes this would just display that percentage instead of abstracting it into a message, but you know, realism, blah blah blah, you wouldn't know the exact percentage chance of falling. Now there were also other changes that were less visible, like making climbing down a ladder 100% safe. Previously you could slip and fall when you're using a ladder, so that has been changed. Now there are two other PRs that work off of this one, and uh, they did appear after the cutoff for this video, but the show is so short, let's just talk about it. The first PR was to add multiple choices when you try to walk off of a ledge. So basically it will provide you a pop-up giving you multiple options for what you can do with that ledge. I think this is a really great addition. If, if I had a nickel for every time someone says, how do I jump across a roof gap? I would be very wealthy. Which options appear here are contextual, so if you can't jump across, it actually gives you a line explaining why you can't jump that gap. And then the second PR is currently only a draft, it has not been merged with the game, but it seeks to expand the mechanics around climbing. Now the biggest thing here is that it looks like it will have player mutations and nearby furniture have a percentage modifier on whether you can safely climb down rather than binary results. In other words, when this goes through, assuming it stays exactly as it is now, going down a ladder would not be 100% safe. Instead, it would reduce your chance of slipping by 20%. Now this is just a draft, so I think all of this is currently up in the air and could change a lot. So, you know, I don't want to dive into it too much. My only real feedback here is that slipping on a ladder should just be very low in its likelihood, like 1%. It's very annoying to slip on a ladder. I don't think it should just reduce your slippage by 20%. I think it should be nearly guaranteed that you can safely descend a ladder. And I know we have gear and things like that that make this a little bit more complicated, but it's, it's a ladder. It's not like I'm, you know, climbing down a downspout with 80 pounds of gear on my back. But anyway, as much as there is in these PRs, I'm sure I didn't cover everything, but an expansion to how climbing works is, I mean, it seems pretty great to me. It's historically, it's been all or nothing. You either slip or you don't with no real mechanic being explained to the player. Having these various pop-ups and expanding the mechanics around it seems just objectively good to me. And with that though, this incredibly short show has come to an end. Some self plugs though, here at the end. If you didn't see it, I did my first sort of review for a, a game called Swarm Survivor. I would like to get back into playing more indie zombie games, so I've been playing some in my free time and plan to make a few videos about them. Swarm Survivor was recommended to me as a zombie game. It's not actually a zombie game, but I had some fun playing it, so I made a video about it. And I'm literally about to record the audio for one that is basically like indie, like an in, in indie version version of Call of Duty Zombies, so that should be up on the channel probably in the next week, and we're just gonna go from there. I would like to make other kinds. I've been playing Cataclysm for four years. I'm so burnt out on Cataclysm. I love you. Thank you for being here. I know most of you are only interested in Cataclysm, but it's just been killing me to do the same thing for so long. So indie zombie games are sort of why we're all here, right? We all love Cataclysm, so some of you will be interested. Anyway, everyone, thank you for watching. Whether you would watch other stuff or not, doesn't matter. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and I'll be back in a couple weeks with another episode, so I'll see you next time.